Yeah, there are certain times when I'm doing math on, in, on the board and I'll skip steps. Uh, please feel free to ask if you're wondering what happened to the step. Yes, Layla. Um, so we were able to figure out 15 and over 9 because that was acceleration. Because once it's in the air, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. Oh, okay. That stays the same. So since neither, well, since neither acceleration change, the total is constant, and therefore we can use these formulas. Once it hits the ground, there's now another force involved, and so acceleration is changes. So I can't use these to figure out anything once it hits the ground without giving you a lot more information. Did I answer your question? Any other questions? So even yes. if we're giving a different acceleration, we can still we can still use the same formula. Is that correct? For projectile motion with no air resistance, absolutely. Now I know I worked out a problem taking air resistance into account. It was a calculus-based problem, so it would be posted for a 251 class. It's possible I posted it for 151 also, and hopefully put a parenthetical note that this is calculus-based. Any of the videos which are calculus-based are there just because I've had calculus students in the past, and I thought they might appreciate it. The calculus-based problems or videos are optional, just in case you're, you see them and get stressed out. Don't get stressed out, it's not a calculus-based course, unless you want it to be. But Sarah doesn't want it to be, we won't do it. <laughs> There'd be any um, situations where there would be a question that we wouldn't have to solve calculus based that would be solvable calculus based though? If I gave you one that I, I've given problems which are easier to solve for calculus based, but still doable. Uh, for example, the I, I can't remember exactly what the curve looked like, but you know, where is it yeah. speeding up? If this is the position versus time graph. Right. I think in the for the 151 test, I didn't actually give the equation. I might have or might not have. For 251, I gave the equation for the for this curve in case someone wanted to solve it that way. But that's one where calculus might come in handy, but not necessary. Okay. If we ever had an, uh, a qu like a question that we could solve calculus based, would you go for it? Be fine with that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Don't don't limit yourself on on your solving techniques. I, I only ask because I'm currently taking Calc three, and so okay. far it seems almost like the same course. Uh, not necessarily the same course, but there's a lot of overlap with this and that. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, the the whole of chapters two and three, I first saw in calculus class. I did not see in physics. Yeah. Then I get to physics. Um, it's not until you get to chapter four that you really start to you get to the first real physics equation. Okay. But all the rest of it, I, everything in chapters two and three is based on definitions and math. Okay. Right. Other questions right now? All right, let's make it more complicated so Dylan can bring in his hypotenuse. Now, in a problem, I would probably not write VI 
I, on a test problem, I would probably not write it that, like that. I would say a ball is projected at an angle of 57 degrees above the horizontal at an initial speed of 30 meters per second. So I gave you the direction, I gave you the, the magnitude, and so from that you should be able to parse out, oh, that's the velocity. We're going through the exact same process we did before, it's just there's, the math's slightly more complicated because we'll end up probably using the quadratic formula. But we start out with what do we know? And let's assume this is perfect. Some generic place on Earth. Vertical acceleration of your North Pole. Meters per second squared. So, what has he just established? Well, he just established down as positive. However, you know what? We did up, we did down positive last time, so let's go ahead. We'll do up as positive this time. So this becomes negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And all right, so what else do we know? And again, if we had chosen down to be positive, both of these would, both, would be positive. All right, we know uh, one more piece of information without having to do any math. Horizontal acceleration. Yeah. Can't believe I didn't do, say it. Give me the whole thing. Thank, thank you. All right, now we, so we have all that we can find right now without doing some math, so now let's do some math. We have this in polar form, we need to get it into rectangular form. So I draw a triangle. Now we have a hypotenuse of 30 meters per second. And I want to figure out what my vertical or if I do it in the order of writing it, my horizontal and vertical components are. This is a process that we will use throughout the course. Uh, we will have a vector and we need to break it up into perpendicular components. It's not always gonna be horizontal and vertical, but we'll be breaking up a lot of vectors. This angle here is 57 degrees. I have an opposite side, I have an adjacent side. Which true function is associated with the opposite side? Somebody said something, I missed, didn't understand the words. All right, tangent's got opposite in it. What else does? Sine. Since we have the hypotenuse, sine probably makes a little bit more sense. The sine, uh, I'll label this cleverly, how about A and B? I'm using A for that, so how about not? X and Y? Did you just give us 57? Yes. Okay. So sine of 57 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse, or Y is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of 57 degrees. Somewhere around 44. 25.16 degrees. 25.16 what? Degrees. Oh, uh, meters. 
Don't we want to finish that for her? Yeah, per second. Meters per second. This 30 is meters per second. And sine of 57 degrees doesn't have units. So the units of this would be units of that. So this is 25.16 meters per second. And then horizontally, this will be by hypotenuse times the cosine of 57 degrees. Understand where I'm off now. I meant to do 53 degrees instead of 57, but it doesn't change the ability to work the problem. Right, so what is this? 16.34 meters per second. My initial vertical velocity is 25.16 meters per second. If we had chosen down to be positive, then my displacement and my acceleration vertically would be positive, but my initial velocity would be negative. And that can be, yeah, get the signs right there. If you don't get the signs right, potentially you're going to end up with a solution that's imaginary. If you get a negative under a radical, one of two things happens. That means one of two things. One, you made a mistake. Or two, there's no solution. So just think physically, if I shot something up at an angle, would it hit the ground below me? It seems logical that it would. I could throw something that could land on the ground. So I better have some real solution. All right, I know my three things here. I can now find time. I can calculate final velocity horizontally, but it doesn't really tell me much. So which equation do I use to find time? This is a different question. Okay. Why is the 25 not negative if I'm one of the direction it's going is down? Because I shoot the thing upwards. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got it. Yeah, it all comes down to that. Other questions before someone tells me which equation we use? Would the final velocity, horizontal velocity be 16.34 because acceleration is zero, or do we still need to do more math? No, you could think through it, absolutely, no problem there. Or if you plugged into this equation, you get the same thing. All right, now, any other questions? Now back to my question. Which equation do we use in order to figure out how much time it's in the air? No, third one. Yes. That third one yet again. And now I need to erase stuff. I'm hoping people have the trick part. All right, so the third one. Now, for some of you, you can just plug the number straight in, and, but for some of you, probably need to be a little bit more methodic. I'm first just gonna write the equation down to make it clear to whoever's grading what I'm doing here. I'm gonna plug in the vertical stuff. So I have negative 17 is equal to 25.16 T plus 1 half negative 9.8 t squared. Negative 17 is equal to 25.16 t minus 4.9 t squared. 
I have a quadratic equation. How do you solve a quadratic equation? And what do we need to do before we can plug into the quadratic formula? Yep. So I can either add everything over, make sure everything is on the left side or the right side. This is my own personal eccentricity. It doesn't matter which one you do. I'm going to take everything over to the left side only because personally I like the coefficient of the quadratic term to be positive, and that's just the childhood scar thing. So 4.9t squared minus 25.16t minus 17 is equal to zero. And without saying it, what's the quadratic formula? Give them, come up with two answers. One of which, both of them have physical meaning, only one of which will have a physical, uh, is valid for the way the problem is stated. So I do want both answers for what we're doing right now, and then we'll talk about what both answers mean. Uh, so I got 25.16, negative, negative, plus or minus the square root of negative 25.16 squared minus four times when we're done today uh, would somebody the last thing I want you to say to me as we're walking out is hey could you send an email about the other board when we're going to get it back or was that board there beginning of the semester I don't know if that board used to be over here It seems like an odd place to put it. But. So time is plus or minus the square root of square minus four times A times C all over two times four point two. Now, some people are chugging away. Um, if somebody could tell me what the discriminant is, in other words, the, what's under the radical? What is this number? Uh, 31.08. 31.08. That's after you took the square root. Before you do the square root, My discriminant is a positive number, as I would expect, which means we're going to get two real solutions. All right, so what are my two solutions here? The answer, the final answer, I got 5.74 and negative 0.6. Anyone else get the same thing? Obviously, which is the solution that would answer our question about how much time it's in the air? I heard somebody say it. Okay. What does the negative answer mean? Time travel. Pardon? Time travel. 
travel? No, uh, time? not quite time travel. Well, it is, I guess, as much as the positive ones, also is time travel. There's no rip in the space time continuum here. Taking up a lot of room there. Let's think about what the math problem is actually solving. The math problem here, all it sees is a parabola. That's what the math problem sees. And we're trying to figure out at what value, at when, at what times it's crossing our horizontal axis. This is the math problem here. We are launching it so that it is as a specific slope so that we have 30 meters per second, 5.57 degree angle there. This is time is equal to zero. This is my time axis. This is my vertical axis. The two times it's finding, it finds this time right here and it found this time right here. This is negative 0.60, and this is 5.74. I would expect to have a negative answer, and I would expect that negative answer to be to have a smaller magnitude than my positive answer. If I shot it downwards, again, the math problem would be parabola like that. If I was shooting it downwards, this would be my situation where I'm shooting it downwards. I expect a positive and a negative answer Except now I would expect the negative answer to have a larger magnitude than my positive answer. All right, so we've got this thing launched up. Uh, launched, we have our time, 5.74 seconds. Now we can figure out how far out it's been shot using Everyone's favorite equation. The distance to get shot out is equal to 16.34 times 5.74. This one's for you, Dylan. What's one half? Zero times 5.74 squared. 